Hi there, thank you for joining us for Hobbies, Crafts, and Collectibles this week. I'm your host, Deska Cornwell. Mankind has been working with clay for thousands of years, and today we are fortunate to have two very special artists with us that are going to show us some different techniques. Jackie Warden from Charleston and Dan Johnson, also a local artist, will be joining us here in the studio. Stay with us. What a joy to have Jackie Warden from Charleston with us in the studio today. Jackie, thanks for coming. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, and I'm thrilled to see the range of work that you do. You're an artist at heart, aren't you? I am. Been learning for a long time. Since <laughs> probably the time I could hold a crayon in my hand. <laughs> Jackie um, is kind of a Jill of all trades. She has um, beautiful drawing and painting work, and she's known for her pottery work as well, which really is what drew us to her to ask her to come into our studio today. And she's brought a lot of different work, so we are going to buzz through this. Um, hold on to your seat belt, <laughs> or fasten your seat belt. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to start the very first. What I love is that, you know, Jackie told me earlier that you've been drawing and painting since you were a kid and doing pottery work too. You brought some of your first work, which I love. This is first grade. <laughs> now, Jackie, I, I can tell it has a tail and it has ears, but is this? It's is a horse. horse? Oh, it's good. a horse. It's a See, horse. <laughs> and, and, and you can tell that the nostrils are, are big. Yeah, <laughs> very good. So she started in first grade and even in eighth grade, you showed such promise. This is a beautiful piece of work and it has 24 faces in it. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but what did you call this? You titled this? Well, <laughs> it reminded me of a pie crust and so how they crisscross. And when I realized I had 24 faces in there, I decided, well, it wasn't four and 20 blackbirds baked in a pie, it was four and 20 orphans baked <laughs> in a pie, which sounds kind of morbid, but. <laughs> oh, but it's so cute, it's so cute. And they're so all can, happy faces. There you go, there you go, and you can really tell you know, you're, like I said, your potential as an artist, and it's just grown from there. Um, I want to go ahead and, and look at some of your artwork, your painting and drawing, and just describe quickly for us some of the techniques. I, I noticed you had a few of these. These look like they were maybe drawn with pen and then painted. Yes, um, this is a pen and ink with a watercolor wash over it, and I'm a lifetime learner, so every opportunity I have to take a workshop and immerse myself I go, and so this is an adult, what I call adult art camp down um, in Southern Illinois, and it's the Southern Illinois Arts Workshop, and they have different teachers come in, and so a couple uh, seasons ago, they had a person come in and show us how to do pen and ink and watercolor. Right, and from there, you've actually done several different um, techniques. Let's look at these two small ones up here. This one I wasn't real happy with, and so I went back and I added colored pencil and, and got kind of a cloud formation around my okay. um, angels. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the colors in this one. It's really neat. And this one kind of looks like it's a multimedia piece. It is. That one, it was another workshop I attended, and it was paper making, and it even has some leaves put in. Right. Actual... Um I don't know if you can see the texture there, but those are leaves put over the painting, which is very... And actually, they were put in first, and then the paper pulp put on top of it. Oh, And okay. then you squeeze out all the excess moisture, and then that was on the front. But it's kind of like reverse glass painting. Right. I understand. Very cool. Now, these done here... And I that was done the same way. Okay, your flowers back on the yes. back wall, which I love um, the, the organic look of that and the way you framed it. It's very beautiful. Um, show me this one right here, this very colorful piece you've done okay. with chalk. It yeah, like pastel. pastel, soft pastels. Um, I sometimes have to challenge myself to not want to work realistically, and so this was just kind of a big bold pattern that I thought might be kind of fun, mm -hmm. like on fabric or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. And this is actually one of my favorites because I grew up in the woods and with a creek. So <laughs> I love this piece. This is just beautiful. Let me hold it up for the camera right here. And you can kind of explain a little bit about what inspired you in this one. That was at camp. Okay. And we were painting on site. It's called plain air painting, which is a French term. And you set up your easel and you've got all your pastels on the ground and on the table around you. And you just kind of, and of course it was a very green day because it was like early, you know, early spring. Uh huh. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. That, that reminds me of my childhood. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, beautiful work as far as your drawing and painting, but I really want to get to some of your um, pottery. You do hand work. Um, you do wheel work as well. I do. I know. But um, in fact, this is a couple of examples real quick of your, your wheel work. 
such symmetry. <laughs> Funny, I tried wheel work once. <laughs> Mine was kind of like the leaning tower of Pisa, but this is beautiful, um, a beautiful bowl with a kind of a metallic glaze on it. Is that like a salt glaze or what do you call that? Um, this was an oil based, I mean, it is an oil based, but it's, it's got an oil finish in terms of mm. how reflective yeah, it is. I understand. And then this one is um, kind of a raised, oh, it looks like a trivet of yeah. some sort, but it's beautiful flower. And this one, was thrown this way and then thrown oh. and then flipped over. So I threw the flat surface and then left some extra material and threw this base up so it's all centered. I see, very nice, that's really lovely. Um, okay, now I wanna show a couple of your more, I would say elaborate works before we start, because I get to play today. I get to play with some clay. This is lovely, this is an Asian inspired piece. Yeah. I love architecture and I love botany and I love um, the Asian influence and so, of course, the lid, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, the roof line of the pagoda and then this is bamboo and this was inspired from like uh, an artist day at the garden at mm -hmm. West Whitesides because he's got bamboo growing in the back. Oh yeah, and that's a local um, garden gardener. He's got a beautiful garden. My gosh, yes. So these are the... Uh, stalks of the bamboo, and then on the other sides are the um, oh the leaves the leaves beautiful that is lovely and again one of my favorites this turtle I got to swim with sea turtles once so this really reminds me of of that now this has a little surprise inside I want to show you first of all very carefully this one's made out of porcelain oh it's a porcelain okay and what is the difference between uh, you know a porcelain uh, and work? stoneware. Mm -hmm. Um, stoneware has more iron in it. Sometimes there's a mid-range stoneware that doesn't fire as high. Porcelain doesn't have the um, impurities, so it's a nice white. I see. That makes perfect. Thanks for explaining that. That makes perfect sense. Now this has a little surprise in there. You have a preserved dragonfly inside, and I'm afraid. Can I hold him with this tail? Yes. Or not? Okay. I think so. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? I was a naturalist oh. for the Champaign County Forest Preserve, so. I still love nature. That's a lot of my inspiration. Oh, well, I can tell. And that's lovely. I, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay, now, um, one of the things that you are known for is your um, puff, puff balls. Puff balls. Um, these are pinch pots. And we are, we're actually going to be able to make one today. So I want to um, get started on that process. And let me show you, first of all, one of your finished pieces. This, is, um, this would be an example of a pinch pot. This one actually has a little lid. It's a sugar bowl. I yeah. love this. And you even made the spoon yep. inside there. You can lift it out. Okay, it was kind of a... Um... Is it glued in with the sugar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay, was, well... I was trying to hide that. See, this is a little spoon. <laughs> a little spoon. There's a spoon There's in a there. <laughs> it's just a little bit... Uh, but Oh, it's beautiful. And the little lid that goes on it. This would be an example of one that's been bone dried. Um, and pre-glaze, right? No, there's nothing on it. This right. It has been made... I see. And, and it's before anything. It's not been mm -hmm. fired at all. If gotcha. we put this in a pot of water, it would just dissolve. It would dissolve. Okay. Very nice. And one of the examples of your, I think, again, a very elaborate. I'm afraid to pick that one up, Jackie. It's so beautiful. Um, this one, we'll get a little zoom in on that. This one is so pretty. I call several, that the forest floor. Okay, the beautiful leaves and several pinch pots there that you can see. So um, we're gonna have time to make one pinch pot. So let's go ahead and show me, we're gonna use the wheel and kind of prop it up on here. And uh, show me how this is done. Get to get okay. my hands dirty Now today. I'm gonna step up because sure. otherwise you aren't gonna be able to see my hands. But here's a lump of clay. Would you like a smaller lump or is that a good lump? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the nice thing <laughs> about good. clay is that your tools don't have to be real elaborate. This is a fishing line with a couple of washers. Great idea. And make it into a ball. Okay. You can be working. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Work, very, uh, <laughs> very <laughs> fortunate to do this with you, but I am just kind of want to watch you. Okay, and then <laughs> sometimes they're called thumb pots because a lot of times people start them with their thumb. Oh, okay. To start the first hole. And you use your hand as the wheel. So this would have been like one of the most primitive ways of making a pot. Okay. Long before the wheel, or if you didn't have access to a wheel, 
you could pinch a pot. Gotcha. And it's funny, mine doesn't look round like yours. I don't know what it is. But. <laughs> <laughs> You're going back and forth. You can use your hand to go around and round. Okay. <laughs> and as I'm turning, I'm pinching. Mm -hmm. And what I find sometimes kind of fun to do is you can use corn cobs for texture. Inspiration everywhere, look at that. Oh yeah. But in this particular case, I'm gonna use a piece of netting that came from an onion bag. And that's amazing. Then, now that it's a little bit bigger, I'm gonna start using my fingers. And I'm gonna be pressing and pinching and pressing and pinching, and the reason that I brought the banding wheel. This is not, this is just a turntable. It's not a kick wheel. It's not mm. for anything except you can center your things and if you're wanting to make designs on it. Mm -hmm. Or in my case, I like to be able to put something up and see what it looks like from all different directions. And that really helps, um, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but the, but the wheel or the circles that kind of converge concentric there, yes, they help you to kind of make sure you you're doing a, a symmetric job. <laughs> now, still don't have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Working on that ball. We only have a couple minutes left. Okay. So. Well, we'll we'll squeeze this one and we'll make this one a real fast one here. So, as you do this and you're pressing in, I don't know how much the camera can pick up on this, but the clay is moist enough that the texture of the oh, onion wow. bag is picking up. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do, if I can find the end of it. Oh, neat. Look at that. Now. It looks almost like a snake skin. Yeah. Now I'm going to stretch it. Oh. And this is where I kind of, I mean, I haven't gone all the way around. Uh -huh. I, I like to get all the way around once before I do this. But I like to, okay. This is how I, you know, I find my center. Oh, and yeah. How do you get that flare at the top before we're okay. done here? I know you've got, we're right. really rushing her today to get this done, but. You pinch. And so you, that's where th that comes in, the pinch. Yeah, there's more, there's, there's even more pinching. And that's one right. of my friends who has tried this, she's like, Jackie, you make it look so easy. Hers always end up being bowls yeah. that are flared out instead yeah. of in. But <laughs> if you pull your clay towards the center, you'll get more of a vase-like ah, okay. design. Okay, okay. And then, as you get it up here, and you can keep kind of pushing this out and getting more cylindrical, more sphere-like, then, excuse the fingers, but You're it fine. works. I don't have my pot of water here. I. I see. And then how do you, do you flatten the top of that then when you're, well, some I, of them, look, you know, and you can do that, you can form it however you want. And yeah, no, no two and then, you know, I can, alike, I can, right? I can pull it back. Here's an example of no two look alike. <laughs> well, that looks like a flower. <laughs> this is my pinch pot. <laughs> well, I, I started with a, <laughs> We've yeah. got to wrap up, but it's okay. beautiful. Look at that. You can just see it forming before your eyes. It's very cool. Um, yeah, people should Google you and check out some of your work. We have got um, to wrap up, but Jackie, thank you so much for bringing in your work. Look how beautiful. Let's point that down. Very nice work. Thank you so much, Jackie, for bringing that in. I can't believe you made that in a matter of four minutes. That's wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Jackie. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to welcome Dan Johnson to our set today. Dan, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for bringing your beautiful work. Um, it's kind of unusual on this show. We have had two potters and we talked to Jackie Warden earlier and talked a little bit more about hand forming. I know that a lot of what you do, the base is wheel forming clay. So mm -hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit more about that and the process and some of the materials today. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. I'm seeing some beautiful things. Um, First of all, just tell me how you got started in this, Dan. Um, I started in 1996. My, okay. uh, my wife was an art student here at EIU, 
And so I was hanging around the studio and they said I wasn't allowed to hang around and do nothing. So she and then some of the graduate students taught me how to throw. Oh. And um, so that's when I originally learned how to throw and I'd done it a little bit off and on. And then um, we had moved away and then we'd come back to the area. And about six years ago, I started to take classes at Parkland originally. And then oh. I also, um, I throw, we have an, uh, I have an art studio of my own. And then also we throw with my wife. And then I also ha um, throw at Eastern sometimes. And I've worked with uh, Dwayne Narragon here at EIU as mm -hmm. well as Bill Hayduke. And, um, some well-known area right, potters. Right, some well-known yes. area potters. And they've worked with me in, in terms of throwing. And I've been throwing um, con very consistently and quite a bit for the last six years. Oh, mm -hmm. well, you do. You've learned well, and you've learned from the best, that's for sure. Um, what I love about what you've brought today is there's so many different techniques. So I want to kind of start over here. Okay. What, what is it that these items have in common? Okay. Well, basically, the items on this side are all basically wheel-thrown pieces. Okay. Um, they're all uh, high-fire, stoneware types of pieces. So uh, I do a lot of functional pieces, things that I want people to be able to use and enjoy every day instead of just setting on a shelf and worry about it getting broken. So. Um, you know, we have vases, um, so this is a, gen a basic vase or urn type of a shape that we do quite a bit of, mm -hmm. um, which is usable and it's, it's water um, proof and can be used for flowers or anything along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have here a teapot, which is also, it's a functional, well, it's a little bit larger, so I'd call that a coffee pot, but that's so a functional coffee or teapot. And this is, again, it's a wheel thrown form, but then a wheel thrown spout and a wheel thrown hand, uh, lid mm -hmm. and then hand pulled. And this is a porcelain piece that, that I did and with a green glaze here. So again, it's a fully functional piece. I see. So. So now, as far as materials, um, Jackie was explaining a little bit about the difference between the stoneware and the porcelain. Mm -hmm. Are there other, I hear the term bisque a lot, like what are, what are the, what's the difference? I okay, guess. so um, we have several different kinds of clay. We have stoneware clays and earthenware clays are the two primary types of clay. Okay. Um, bisque refers to the temperature that you fire it to or, or mm -hmm. heat it to in the kiln. So um, these pieces here are heated to somewhere around 2,150 degrees to 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit mm -hmm. on the glaze firing. Gotcha. But before you make an application of the glaze, you have to what's, do what's called a bisque firing, where you fire it maybe to uh, 1,700 degrees to to get most of the moisture out of the clay and to get the cl and to get the clay partially vitrified. Mm -hmm. So then it does so then it can withstand being wetted with the glazes. I see. Um, and so. Uh, the bisque, bisque refers to the temperature, the original f primary firing um, that you do to a lower temperature. Makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. I'm glad you explained that. Um, now, here's a couple of beautiful plates. Uh, explain, there's, diff there's a kind of a base color that's the same, but then you've getting, you're getting some different right. techniques so, here. So these are um, some dinnerware plates that I've done in the past. So, you know, often we'll have people say, hey, can you make me Christmas presents for people or something? And so we'll do dinnerware plates. And so this is a few extras that came out. And so these are actually the same glazes that we, on both of these plates. Oh, okay. Um, but what happened was, was based on where they were in the kiln and maybe the thickness where they were applied, where this has some finger marks here, you can see that the darker areas are in the finger marks where, mm. where my fingers maybe pressed a little bit more heavily. You get a different look or different crystals that form um, based on the thickness or based on where it actually is in the kiln, I based see. on how fast it heats up or how slowly it cools down. So those can actually affect the coloration. That's what I love, because you have a basic idea what the colors are going to be, but when you open that kiln, there's a surprise as far as what right. effect it took, right? Yeah, we say that every time you open a kiln, that's like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> because you have an idea what might happen in there, but it's a really, it's an unpredictable craft, and mm -hmm. you never know exactly what's going to come out of the kiln. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. <laughs> so you just have to you just have to be prepared for that. I understand. Now you said this was a new glaze that you're working with right now. Yeah. So this is a new. Uh, it's a you called it. It's a cobalt glaze that we're using this summer, and uh, we just started uh, experimenting with these glazes. So like like you and I were discussing earlier, a lot of these glazes are actually experimental, where we mm. we try we think that they're going to come out in a certain way, and we try them out. If they come out the way we want them, then we continue to use them. If not, then we have to make alterations to the chemical formula and try to get them to look the way we want them to look. I see. Um, because it's not as simple as just saying, here's a blue glaze, it's gonna come out blue <laughs> after the kiln. I mean, this this color actually looks uh, pink when you apply it to the pieces, oh. and then it comes out blue after you fire it. I see, mm -hmm. oh, that would be fun. Yeah, I so. love that, and I love what you said about this one. I explained, we're moving into a different area, slab right. work here. Right, so this is a slab uh, built plate here. So what we do is we actually roll out clay, um, to a thin, uh, about a quarter inch thickness. 
and then we drape it over molds that we make. So this is uh, based on a wooden mold that I had made, and then we drape it over and we form it to that mold, and then we get these we get these square shaped plates. I um, see. So we'll do we do I do trays and plates and sushi trays and serving trays and all sorts of things, and those are typically based on a slab based um, start. Um, and what I love, you've got the cobalt glaze. Now you've right. applied. Um, a different glaze to this side, explain that. Okay, so, so the glaze on the other side is what we call a scrap glaze. Um, it's basically all the leftovers from different glazes that we've used over time from just cleaning tools to cleaning pieces and then eventually we get just a, a bucket full of remnant glazes that we can then use. And this is just a, a green glaze that was a scrap glaze that we used and we don't have it anymore and it's not really reproducible <laughs> because it's just based on the, the throwaways that we had used for the last year. I love that. It's got kind of a model look, but mm -hmm. I, I love too that it's, it's one of a kind. It's one of a kind, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Okay, now we're really getting creative. Okay. <laughs> so. Explain, this is an interesting process, a firing process that you have. Right, so this is, this piece here is a, it's a hand, th it's a wheel thrown piece, and it's a style of pottery called raku. And you can see there's a lot of inconsistencies in the glazing. Um, and that's due to the fact that we actually heat this up to a temperature of about 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we open up the kiln when everything's still hot and we pull the pieces out of the kiln when they're still uh, yellow hot. Okay. And then we place them into a pile of combustible material. We set that on fire and then we smother that fire with some type of a covering or I sometimes use trash cans that have a locking top and then we smother the fire out and then all of the smoke then interacts with the, with the glazes and based on the chemicals in the soot, they'll give a different reaction to the glaze and so you get different effects, all with, uh, same glaze but different effects all on the same pot. Oh, that is really neat. So, I love the copper look to yeah, that Yeah, and one. this is a copper-based glaze. And it's um, kind of in process, you said. You're going right. to still do some things to this one. Right. We're still, we'll, one of the bad things about these is since they have a high metal content glaze, they're actually, they can't be used for food products. Mm -hmm. um, they, they can be toxic. So they, but they can be used for things like flower pots and things along those lines. Sure. Um, so, um, but we're going to go ahead and clean this because you can see there's still quite a bit of black in the glaze and that's actually soot from the firing process that's trapped in the glazes. So we'll go ahead and clean that out with a, with a soft bristled brush and then we can go ahead and it'll uh, let the colors come out a little bit more and then we can either wax it or we can seal it with a, with a lacquer and to lighten up the colors a little bit. Neat. I, I like the blistering on that side. I think that's really... It's really an interesting effect. Yeah, it really is. Now, these um, couple pieces here, the pitcher and the fish, these were actually started as a wheel thrown pot. Right, so this fish here was <laughs> was started um, like that, the brown, the brown uh, vase on the end. And so mm -hmm. it was started like that and then after it was taken off the wheel, then it was manipulated and we, uh, <laughs> and I was able to, to close the mouth off of a little bit and the bottom of it was actually then compressed and turned into the back part of the fish and the, mm -hmm. and the tail fins. And then um, I hand built the uh, side fins, top fins, put the eyes on there and then carved in the gills and the scales for this piece. Oh, that's um, neat. And it, this is also a raku piece. So it was also taken out at uh, 1750 degrees and then put in a combustible <laughs> material, so. And you had fun with the glazing on this one. You used uh, several different. This has three different glazes on it. And so mm -hmm. you never know exactly how they're gonna turn out when you mix glazes like that. And this sure. was just a really positive effect. So we, we were happy with this one. Yeah, it's it turned out so. lovely. And now this is fast fascinating to me. The, the original mold you made, um, explain where you found this image. <laughs> okay, so, so this is actually a mask that I made. It's a Homo erectus mask. And what I've done is I've taken some skulls over from around town. I have some friends that work in uh, biology. And we actually took plaster molds off of the faces of the skulls. And then I was able to use the plaster mold then to pour my own masks. And so I have, various, I have a lot of these masks and then I can actually take them, I can cut them and I can then individualize each mask based off the, the base blank that I've taken off of that skull. So I've got blue ones, I've raccooed them, I've done all sorts of different colors and I can do different facial expressions on them. Oh, so, fun. yeah, so. <laughs> I love that you can see the teeth on yeah, it. I this hope one, the camera picks that one yeah, up. Yeah, this one I actually <laughs> carved into the teeth so you could see them a little bit better and then yeah. opened the mouth up a little bit. But you can actually, we've put smiley faces on them, we've left them, <laughs> yeah, we've done a little bit of everything, so. Now, this last mask over here is very <laughs> creative. Um, and you find your inspiration a lot of different ways. I love what you said earlier when we were bringing this one out. You said, these are your daughter's ears. Yeah. On this mask. <laughs> so the original idea for this mask came from a wood carving mask that was hung in my grandmother's house that um, was brought back from Indonesia. Oh, 
Okay. And so um, the, the original idea sort of came from, from what I remembered from that mask as a child. And so then I went ahead and I did this in, in clay. And again, this is a pot that was thrown and then I cut the pot in half. That's interesting. And this was a pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then each half of the pot serves as, as a base for two, for a new mask. And gotcha. so, and then the ears here um, were hand built. I built the, I modeled those off of my daughter's ears, um, the tongue. Um, that's not based <laughs> off of anybody I know. Um, that's good. I'm really <laughs> glad to hear that. So, um, but then, then it's just a basically just carving and sculpting from the nose and for the different markings in the face. And then, um, and then I just I mentioned to you before too. For example, the eyebrows to get the look of the hair and the eyebrows. Those are That's actually um, you can use different things around the house. Like we use wooden spoons and knives and things just from the kitchen. But those eyebrows were actually extruded through window screens that were that. from my house. So we just pushed them through the window screens, and that it's gives like the, yeah, it gives you a, a, <laughs> something that seems like hair. Yeah. So yeah. Well, Dan, you do beautiful work, and I really appreciate you bringing mm -hmm. these special pieces and explaining some of the process mm -hmm. to us and what no the differences are. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, Appreciate thank you it. so much. Thank you so much for joining us for Hobbies, Crafts, and Collectibles. If you know someone who has an interesting hobby, craft, or collectible and we should talk to them, please contact us. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.